longevity lifestyle designers. This is Govan here with Secrets of Longevity.com. In some of my time that I spend just thinking and mulling over different concepts, whether they're health related or not, in my mind, more and more I tend to fall on some of these ideas of underlying, you could call it philosophy or um, perspectives, which almost have a spiritual element to them based in Eastern concepts sometimes. Uh, and I find I continually come back to a lot of these concepts from Taoism, but also some things from some Western traditions, and a big one being the axiom, as above, so below. And you can always look that up if you want to learn more about the history of that and the uh, reasoning behind it, but essentially, from a spiritual standpoint, it's saying that which is above us, meaning in a spiritual sense, is the equivalent to that which is below, and it's a very grounding, sort of reality-based um, concept, and I think it can be applied to a lot of things, one of which is our body and our health and our individuality and government. So if our body and our way of behaving on an individual basis is reflected in the macrocosm or the bigger society, which uh, if we talk about politics, it involves the government. And that's just the way society currently works. We have a government. But uh, if we were to compare it to the body, uh, there's some things that I think are very revealing and show some blatant problems that we inherently have. And I think this also affects the way people can look at government and the role of politics should and shouldn't play in our lives. So there's a few ways to think about this. One is our health and the way our body works, but also how we work as people and how we interact with the world around us. Would anyone out there, as an individual, if you had zero debt, if you had zero money in your bank account, would you go get a credit card and would you start using that credit card to pay homeless people? Literally get a cash advance on your credit card and directly give that money to a homeless person. Yes, they're in a more difficult place than you, assuming that you have a place to live yourself. They don't, and they don't have money, assuming that they don't. So technically there's the view that this is giving them a helping hand, but is it logical and is it reasonable to take out money that's going to accrue debt and increase in the amount that you owe the credit card company just to give that to someone else? Or does it make more sense to use that debt, if you were to even need to get out debt in the first place, to invest it in something that will eventually return the money to you, whether it's student loan type of debt where you get education you get a better paying job and you have some extra money for charity or perhaps you'd be contributing to starting up a business through debt and then that in and of itself would give you more money that you could give a portion to the charity of your choice or directly to a human that you thought deserved it and needed it when our governments enact deficit spending to pay social programs welfare or foreign aid this is what is happening the government is taking on debt, which has a interest that gets applied to it over time, and it's just throwing the money out the window. Yes, we can make a moral argument and stand for that, but if we were to take a metaphor to talk about this metaphor, what is the thing that they tell you on an airplane in the emergency survival uh, situation that they say at the start of every flight? You put your own oxygen mask on before you try to help someone else. If you can't make yourself feel stable, and have a life that's um, meeting all your basic needs and not taking on risks and dangers, it doesn't make sense that if you're not secure yourself, you're trying to help secure other people. Now that's not to say that you need to be a millionaire before you start giving to charity. You do not take on more debt to help the person next to you. And there can be arguments for exceptions for that, of course. You know, you, you're in debt, but you give $2 to, uh, to buy a poppy on Remembrance Day and you know that money is going to help veterans. But if you're in debt and you're going to work every day and you see that same homeless person and you're putting five dollars in their cup every single day, day in and day out, there's probably a problem there because you're still not able to pay off your debts. And to get to a place of personal stability, you need to curb every single penny that you're spending in excess on anything and put it all down to paying off the debt. Going back to the credit card idea, if you had zero money in your bank account, but you had a stable job and all that, would you be using a credit card to buy expensive jewelry or expensive clothing? Now once again, the microcosm of ourselves, if we reflect out into the macrocosm of society at large, the government using deficit spending to bolster social programs, which 
there's an argument for them being valid and they contribute something to society. It's a completely separate argument as to, you know, voluntarism and whether there should be government handouts of any kind. But if we were to talk about it strictly from the idea that government using deficit spending to, you know, fund research projects, to fund art projects, to buy art installations, you know, multi-million dollar installations that go up in certain cities and things. This is like someone using a credit card to buy bling, to buy fancy clothing. Any kind of non-essential, life-preserving thing that is not a basic survival need. So it's unwise to take out debt that you're going to be paying interest on to buy into these rich lifestyle type things, or even moderate lifestyle type things. It's not an investment into infrastructure, or in the case of your personal life, an investment in you know creating a business or getting an education, something that is an asset to you making more money in the future. What it comes down to as a society when we do this, every single dollar that's spent in deficit, as the deficit increases, and it's increasing drastically for the Western nations of the US, Canada, many European nations, it's this deficit spending that is going to be handed down to future generations. My parents handed it down to me, their parents handed it down to them. It's been deficit spending since about two, three generations ago. And the standard of living that people have gotten so used to, this cushy lifestyle, imported goods from developing nations that we paid through debt by having them hold on to cur our currency, which is rapidly inflating and losing value, that allows us to get these goods and in some cases services which are cheaper and the consequence is that our children have a racking debt load that they're either going to have to end up paying off they're going to be taxed more they're going to have to have less services available to them cut back on services maybe increase tax to pay all that off which at this point is an absolutely insane amount it's considered to be impossible to pay back at this point another option is to default on the debt and they, there's a chance of going to war with those countries and our children might have to fight a war to justify the fact that they're not paying off this debt. Or uh, you default on the debt and the entire economy collapses and everyone has to rebuild, including much of the infrastructure which would not be able to get keep up because there's no one repairing roads, there's no one repairing sewer systems and things like that, and the power grid, etc. So all these things are getting handed down to our future generations. They might even rest on my generation within the next few decades. And that's depressing. Would you, in your own personal life, take on debt and have exorbitant spending year after year that you know when you hit 40, 45, 50, you're going to have to suddenly start making triple the income? Is that even realistic? Are you in a position that you can suddenly just get a job that makes you three, four, five times as much as you currently do? If you knew without a doubt that you were getting a big inheritance or a really great job in the near future, and while it's good not to count your chickens before they hatch, if you do know for sure that you're going to be getting that extra income, you could justify one or two big purchases. But it is completely financially incompetent to rack up a debt that you know you're going to have to default on, i.e. claim bankruptcy, which in the future is going to affect your ability to get a mortgage for a house or do all sorts of things in the future. So it's really damaging to your long-term plans or depending on who you got that debt with, someone might come after you to take out your knees. Now if we were to look at the internal functions of our body and our health and use that as a mirror for the bigger world at large and the natural world and what works best, you've probably heard me talk at times about this idea of the uncarved block that the more we step back and just let things happen, the better and easier they function. This is a go with the flow type mentality or the laissez faire type mentality of if we were to apply it to economics. Now I'm not going to compare the government to the brain, I'm going to compare government to your mind. The more you consciously try to control every function with your body, with your conscious mind, which would be government, the more impossible you realize it is. And actually, the more stressful it becomes, and that stress then causes problems in your body, and you're going to have worse health than if you were to just breathe, relax, and let your mind empty itself, and be vacant and free. The brain controls a whole host of autonomic functions, meaning your brain regulates heartbeat, digestion, all these things, but it does it unconsciously. We can more or less pinpoint and divide successful aspects of governments around the world and unsuccessful a aspects of governments between free market systems, whether it's social or the economic side of things, and see free market always works, socialism doesn't work. The more government gets its hand involved in things, the more it falls apart. Simply look at Detroit, look at any 
communist nation. Look at China in the 70s when they started to give property rights to the people. The economy boomed. Look at the most prosperous times and the fastest growth in the U.S. happened when there's the least amount of regulation. You look at yourself, the more you give yourself rules and regulations, what does your unconscious mind want to do? It wants to break them. The more dietary constraints you give yourself, the more you want to break them and you search for that junk food. The more you just kind of let go and eat natural whole foods, forget the grocery store and all the weird stuff that exists there that really confuses all those natural biological signals that your body gives you, but if you go out into your environment, the wild, and if you have enough knowledge to be able to find the plants and animals that would sustain you, those things that you'd naturally gravitate towards would be the most life-sustaining and healthy things that you could consume. Now, I'm not saying discipline doesn't have its place, I'm saying rigid structures that ignore the rest of your body, meaning your mind thinks it knows what's better for your body than you know the two working together and just being one whole unit. So that you're not forcing yourself and governing yourself, you're just doing what you know feels best to do. And because you have that feedback loop of getting a good response, whether it's endorphins from exercising or uh, a good feeling from eating really good healthy food, then you're going to have the success and health that you want. Likewise, out in the world, when people provide a service that they get paid for and they can set the standards for and they see the living interaction they have with other people without the government coming in and regulating things to death, they understand that, oh, when I change this service or this product in this way, I don't get as many sales, so I need to put it back to the way that other people liked it, and that develops the relationship between people, and that's how it works out. But when you have the government putting its hand in things, allowing monopolies to form and take advantage of people and crush the competition without allowing the free market to dictate the quality and the long-term sustainability of a product or service, then it becomes oppressive, then it becomes a non-functioning system, and it's doomed to fall. So this was a little more of an abstract video. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, favorite, and share the video if you feel so inclined. Also, check out the links below in the video for any affiliates. Uh, these are all products I use from these companies, and any purchases you make through those links helps me continue creating and putting out this content. So with that, I'll talk to you next time. Take care and embrace life without limits.